So I want to kick things off by talking about training. Around a year ago, you mentioned you're training three days a week. You related this to growing up as a kid and only getting 30 minutes of TV at a time, so you had to appreciate it. First, is this still your current training approach? And second, can you talk about your experience with it, both on the physical and the mental side, in as much detail as possible? So it's strange. I started with three days a week. Um, and I'm kind of maybe ending with three days a week. So I started with three just because I had a discipline issue. I uh, grown up. Um, like I think whatever sport I, I participated in, I, I was like, I had a knack for it. And I think that I had a hard time getting like taking feedback at the time. Like you don't understand how valuable like feedback is. Like, even if it's not necessarily all the way constructive, like, like you should, there's a way to win in that exchange. It's like, well, if this person kind of hates me a little bit, they don't like me and they're telling me these things to hurt me. They're probably going for these things that are at least somewhat true, you know, but I just, I would deflect everything. Um, I worked under my own terms, blah, blah, blah. But this lifting thing, like I really enjoyed it. And I kind of got real with myself and I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm prone to just kind of dropping things or, or being less consistent. So we're going to start with three. And not only that, I started at 16. And, and for me to go to my gym, it was like a bus ride across town. Okay. Um, I lived in San Francisco and it, 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 it you, know, you spent some time in the Bay Area, like Worst public transportation ever. Like it's just very hit or miss. Fact. So, um, so I started there, and then you know how it goes. It's like you're when, when it's fresh and new. It's like your rest days are hard, and it's like you know you add more, you add more, you learn new things. You're like I want to throw that in there, and at some point, like what you're doing just kind of becomes this weird concoction of things that don't even go together. Um, reminds me of the book, like where the wild things are and how all the creatures look like, like give it bat wings, you know, give it, you know, raccoon fur, like that's what it becomes. Um, and you know, because you're so excited and if you work hard, like at that point, you just, and, and of course, you know, being consistent with it all, um, you'll get results if you stick around long enough eventually. And that's what I did. And obviously, you know, as the years go by, you know, you, you, you learn more, you get smarter. It wasn't as unreasonable as, as time went on, but you, you learn to kind of, I guess, distill your process somewhat so that like, it's a very pure extract of what it is that you, you, you actually need to, to progress in the weight room. So I think the, the three days a week was kind of just it started as like a post-contest recovery. Like I, went, where I went from five to three. I'm like, well, let me see. We'll, we'll do three at first just so that I can give my body some time to rest and recover so that I can charge it up for the next like off season progress season. And then I'm like, you know what, this will be a great way to kind of test my skill set, both as a lifter and as someone who builds programs for a living to see if I could make this, that efficient um and it worked it worked really well so i just kept it around um and it's it's great because like I, yeah comparing it to the 30 minutes of tv as i got as a I, I i was only allowed to have as a child like when i'm in there like it's so bright it's so wonderful i've been thinking about you all week and i really just enjoy and embrace like every moment, every rep, every warm up, uh everyone I see, um, the even the not so good training sessions. Um so yeah, we, that's where we were at, but you know, we spoke a little bit about this off air. I just had my first baby and um so training's just been whatever I can kind of put together of late. Yeah, that's fair. Um and you've mentioned doing three days um, so I'm curious, do you feel because you weren't going in as often that the sessions were more productive or maybe you were more focused on technique? Like maybe, you know, obviously you take, I'm sure every session seriously, uh, but you know, what changes did you see kind of, you know, decreasing the the frequency? Um, man. So yeah, every, every rep matters a lot more. Um, 
is every rep is so much more important. Actually reminds me, I had a brief stint, I think. I went from Arnold Encyclopedia like type workouts at some point to this thing called Max OT. Max OT was big like in the early 2000s and it was it was promoted by um primarily a really good bodybuilder named Skip Lacour who uh, most people are like who but uh, fitness industry is like a revolving door like you ask these kids about Sam Stoic like 5 years from now they can be like who yeah like that that's that's just the nature of it um tried it made some really good progress but then human nature kind of took over and I started getting back to like my old ways basically uh but it, it worked really well one time and it it worked really well this time and above anything else the fact that I was just able to really just create this program for myself that for the most part as far as I can tell right now and based off like what I know right now you know like I hope to know more in three years. I, it, it worked. It worked. But then all of a sudden light bulbs came up and I'm like, wow, this means like less wear and tear on my joints. Right. And you know, I just turned 41. So I want training a decade from now to somewhat resemble what it is that I'm doing now. Um, I want to do this for a very long time at a, you know, decently high level. Um, and then also like dieting, I was I saw a lot of utility there because you know your weight training when you are dieting kind of plays a different role. It's just there to kind of maintain what you put on during the non dieting phases. So I'm like, you know what? As much as you love training, like it's still a stress. Like I, I don't know about you, but after like a really hard say lower body day, um, like I'm garbage. Like my creative mind is just like done. Like I I don't. I, I, it goes from like that little like lifters high to like like everything's depleted so it's a stress like just how dieting on a really hard work day can make dieting hard i'm like okay this might open up some things for me later on where i can maybe go deeper with my dieting phases than before because i'm just not having to deal with as much stress even even of the variety that, that i really enjoy because i enjoy my lifting like that's for sure but if i had to train six days a week i'd do it but it, it yeah so it unlocked a lot of things but the most important one was probably that you're a little bit closer to mastery in that you can be this efficient um i have a few friends that kind of best way to put it, it's like they're just like incredibly wealthy people and the way they manage money like people would be like whoa, like you, you make like, I don't know, like 300 K a year. I'm just making up numbers, just doing nothing if you wanted to. Right. Yeah. And that's kind of how this fitness thing is, is slowly becoming for myself where, uh, especially like it, right now as a new father, I'm like, wow, I'm so glad that I was like fitness competent. Like as I got into this really rough patch, cause I could see how it can be really hard for people because at some point they're like, I need to do something to take care of myself, but I don't know where to start. So again, it was like the, it was, it was like a peak for me and that I'm like, wow, I, I am able to create something for myself that is so, so, so efficient. And obviously it, it trickles down to my athletes because I want them to have very, very long lifting careers as well. Yeah. I think the idea of mastery is really interesting. Uh, so I'm curious, do you think that, exercise selection is more important for you since you're only training three days a week and you know, you're at a, a very advanced stage at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when you're starting off, like you can, the target is just so big, right. That if you only did pressing, like, like a lot of actual young men start that way. It's like, they just go hit up that bench press in their backyard. Like they'd probably get, some growth in places that aren't even prime movers, like their forearms would get bigger, uh, their biceps. It's just really, it's really just stabilizing the movement. Like that would grow. Uh, but as time goes on, like, yeah, like you, you have to start to work with this, this scalpel. So from a progress standpoint, yeah, you have to be more selective because, Hey, you only have maybe six sets, maybe eight sets a week for say your chest. Um, so 
that and then also because I have some mileage now, um, like things being ergonomic, like matter, they matter a lot. Um, so, so yeah, it, it's all funneled into a lot of great things. And yeah, I, I think everyone at some point should probably do some sort of like spring cleaning, especially the people out there who are just notoriously like hard workers who are willing to, you know, overpay for goals, I guess you yeah. could say. Awesome. And are you still doing more work kind of in the stretch or lengthened position? Uh, primarily, yes. Um, but I, I still scratch the shortened. Uh, if anything, I mean, there's still tension there. Your body still moves in that direction. Um, also, it, it's the part of a range of motion that fatigues first. So it doesn't take a whole lot anyways. Mm -hmm. Um so, so yeah, no, we still do, but the ratio is probably somewhere around, like, I, I think it's pretty biased on my end, like just because I've seen really good results, like 80, 20. Okay. And I want to go back to mastery. I find that really interesting. You've been doing this for a very long time. Do you feel like you're close to mastery or do you feel that there's so much nuance that it's like a, an endless goal? Yeah, I think by the time I, I've, gotten there um i think my abilities as, as an athlete will have uh started to decline um so no I, I don't think i'm there yet i think it takes a lifetime so you know whatever you pick like make it your thing i guess um too many times where i'm like i am there you know especially you, know, you learn a few things and you're like, I, I got this, I got this. And then five years goes by and you're like, I, I really, I really was off with my calculations there. Um, so no, I, I, I want to remain a student. Um, I, I want to continue to learn. Even when I have discussions with people at the gym, like I, I will interact with young men who um, maybe they're not comfortable with saying that, you know, they, don't necessarily know as much as they think they do. Mm -hmm. and, and right away, like five minutes into the combo, I'm like, okay, you're, you're there right now. Don't blame them. Human nature to, to be that way, especially when, you know, you're still low and secure about a few things that that's usually our twenties for most of us. Um, I'm going to be the one in that exchange that, like learns the most. Like that's just kind of my motto when I interact with with people. E even though, if, if on paper I have like more qualifications, more knowledge, I don't care. Like I'm gonna pick something from you that's gonna help me help people like you or something like that. So, no, I, I like Kaz lives like uh, Kaz and Hanson, like literally like right down the road. And like when I go to his place, it's his dojo. Like this is his thing. I am not there to um teach him anything that's my perspective i'm just gonna i'm just gonna absorb and i like, think about this later that's awesome so you're talking about you know maybe more beginner intermediate lifters at the gym so one thing i notice is they can tend to over focus on what the natural pros are doing and there might be a disconnect as one group views lifting as a hobby and the other views themselves as an athlete competing in a sport so in this context, what is one thing you think they're overemphasizing and one thing they are not paying enough attention to? Um, I, I'd probably say the, uh, they're kind of one and the same because it's sneaky, but, um, and actually Kaz said this and, and it stuck with me that, that bodybuilding is, is the sport of over recovery. Um, so what you do outside the gym matters a lot and it's more than just nutrition because i think you know most people like that's the first places they, they go to it's, it's other things that are i think harder to master especially in today's world like sleep is a big one i've um constantly set out my athletes on this like 60 hours a week sleep challenge it's not sustainable by any means for most people but they get a taste for it if they get there and they get to see the impact that has on everything, not just their training. And 
okay, so at least now you see what that feels like. You'll value it. Maybe you won't be able to get 60 hours of sleep every week, but there's at least an incentive there to like have something going there that's somewhat decent. It's it's just I think it's harder to sleep than ever before with like today's like modern world, right? Um there's that the stress management component I think is huge. Um like learning to to that's the probably the greatest gift that not just bodybuilding but prepping like for shows has has taught me because it's such a it's 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 such a more sensitive system when you're taking it there. Like you get sick easier, a bad night's sleep will really wreck you, a hard day will like really wreck you. The little things in your life that you, you find annoying, like they're maybe just pet peeves, they become this big deal. So it teaches you to kind of pick up on like what your own world's constantly trying to tell you but when you're like well fed and excited and you're goal orientated you kind of don't really take the time to acknowledge that there's all these little things you can pick up and retune and and adjust so that not only can your bodybuilding benefit but also the rest of your life and the other important goals you have do you have any tips for stress management uh, it's going to sound kooky, but I love meditating. Um, most people will give it a try and they're like, I suck at this. I'm like, no, you don't. That's that's kind of the point. Like, it, You're probably doing it right, even though you think you're not. So um, what's funny is when I was in the Bay Area, so I've been meditating on and off for like 20 years. And someone was like trying to compete with me on meditating. Like, how many days have you meditated in a row? And in my mind, I was just like, I don't think you understand the point of meditating. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, I mean, I started with such a low dose because I knew that it'd be more than what I was doing. It's kind of like weight training or just like exercising in general. Like people who can only get it in twice a week, they're like, well, I really don't have time. And what they're really saying is like, maybe. I don't have as much time to dedicate to this goal as I think I need. And it's like, it doesn't take much to just get rolling with something. I think, you know, like that's the one thing bodybuilding has taught me is that anything else I do from this point on is going to have a very accelerated, like learning curve as part of mastery that like, yeah, I'll suck day one, but I'll come back day two and I'll be like almost twice as good at whatever that task is. Um, so yeah, with the meditating, I started five, uh, five minutes a day and it still hasn't moved much because Kind of like the same way, same approach I took when I started training. I was like, we'll start with three days a week. So it's really just moved on to 10 days a week. Um, it's not always at the time I'd like it to be. Like sometimes I would like for it to be fresh in the morning, but that, of late that hasn't been the case. It's like, okay, baby's asleep, get it in now, right before bed, whatever. Like something is better than, than nothing. Um but that one is has been huge for me um, and just kind of getting to know my brain a little bit better and, you know, what's what's eating Gilbert grape sort of deal. For sure. You learn a lot during that still time as well because questions or things will pop up. And those are usually the things that cause you stress because they're on your mind. And then you need to figure out, OK, is this in my control? Yes or no. If it's not in your control, you have to kind of let go of it. If it's in your control, then take a small action towards it and kind of get that thought to go away. Yeah, it's just about awareness. That's that's all it really is. That's all it is. But I guess this is like from the people who don't manage, they think it's something, I don't know, like you're floating out in space or something like that. But it's nothing like that. It's it's just, it's, it's... quiet time in your own mind which uh, again especially if you have a lot going on it's not very comfortable but it's 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 much needed man it's like cleaning up that desktop it's the best way to describe it right we live in a really in your face world with things like social media and screens everywhere so just it's being in your own thoughts for a small amount of time and whatever happens happens it's not whatever happens happens exactly exactly Cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to throw out some quotes or phrases you've said in the past. Give me your first reaction to it. 
Uh, so the first one is a flexible dieter is an educated dieter. Yeah, man. Um, so it's, and this is where I think something like the muscle and strength pyramids was, was just, especially when it first came out, just like a huge step. Cause it, it was like, okay, these are the big rocks. This is what you're trying to accomplish. And in the real world, it's never going to be like quick and easy or, or pretty when you, when you really think about it. Um, I guess, I guess, you know, what I try to have my athletes do, especially if they're, they're quite competent in, in some other world, it's like, think about what it took for you to get there, you know, to start your own business, what that looked like, you know, it wasn't about it being perfect every day, being exactly the same. Mm -hmm. um, you just kind of made it work. You kind of just flowed with the obstacles as they came up, but you had these core principles in place. So a flexible dieter needs to understand the core principles and then at the ground level execute, not perfectly, but as best as they can. Um, Cause I think, especially with nutrition, that's what really stops people. It's like they, they get to these points where man, it can't be perfect. Right. Like today's just one of the, those days where like, this is going to be my fourth protein shake of the day. It's like, well, that's just your fourth protein shake of the day. That's just, that's just what today is. Yeah. Um, so uh, a flexible dieter is able to, um, yeah, yeah, keep those big rocks in place, but it doesn't always look pretty, and they're able to kind of just absorb the hits as, as like life happens. Um, so, so yeah, yeah, it's 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 never pretty. Like even, you know, we 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 sometimes we don't give those people enough credit, like the folks who have these amazing training responses, like these these like influencers with great physiques. I, if people saw them when it comes to their day to day, like it's crazy just how consistent they, they actually are. Um, so just about anyone with a pretty good physique, like that's one thing, like, you know, you can be pretty sure of it somehow, some way they make it happen. And it's not always like this beautiful, like fruit bowl with like the sliced up bananas and the blueberries. Nah. For sure. Uh, next quote is, Scale your timeline up and give yourselves five to 10 years to accomplish your goal. That's just how long it takes to be good at anything. Um, and I'd probably aim for the 10 years, it, it, right? So that's why you got to pick things in life that really align with your core values um, because it's hard either way. Like even if you have a knack for this thing, even if this is, really what you want um might expedite it a bit but yeah, you just can't rush it um especially like this fitness thing it, like eventually once you have those big rocks it's just something that takes place in the background of, of your life like that's 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 the goal and a lot of people when they're doing it that way it feels naughty it feels inappropriate like no i, I should be more obsessed with this and yeah, your mind's going to wander off and think about tomorrow's workout, you know, how, what you heard in this one po podcast, the, how, how you can maybe apply some of that. Like, yeah, that's always going to be racing. But in actuality, um, man, I've seen some people get some really amazing physiques, some really good progress by just simply never stopping. Um, so that, that's, that's the key. Um, the, the reason I picked this out was I've given this, uh, advice to someone pretty recently, uh, a younger person I was mentoring who kind of wanted to, you know, make it big financially, but he gave himself a deadline of one year. And I just kind of talked through it saying, well, if you're going to do this in one year, you're going to have to do something incredibly risky and get lucky. But if you give yourself 10 years, you're going to give your mind some time to wander and think of ideas and slowly work at it. So just like extend your time horizon. I know we want it right now, but sometimes if you want it right now, you're just never going to get it. So just give yourself five, 10 years and just chip away at it. And you'll generally be headed in the right direction, at least. 
Yeah, there's a lot of exact risk and luck. Like w whenever we do hear those stories of like these amazing um, turnarounds, but like the grand majority of, I guess, fitness wealth isn't isn't developed in, in, in say a year. It's usually multiple years. And, and you know what? Like this is all a lot of fun. So, and it teaches you, it teaches you, like I, I, I mentioned, I pull so much from this that whenever there's something else I want to do. I just, I try to put myself in this, the, I guess a similar situation in my own mind that, that like how, and how, what are the errors that are new entering the fitness world today would make? And it really cleans things up for me and, and it gets me to, to be patient and, and yeah, not try to not do things that are going to require luck because you can't always count on that. You'll get some if you hang around long enough when it comes to any task. Um, but also where I don't have to expose myself to those risks that can like legitimately just have everything topple over like overnight. Awesome. Uh, I got two more here. The next one is don't get fat, but don't go trying to stay too lean for the IG. All the people that don't care about your gains than as much as you do. Yeah. Um, like th this should be something that you, you do. Like I've, I've, I've said this before that if for some reason, like I think it was that Will Smith movie, like he woke up and he was like the last guy left or some, maybe some other movie. Uh, I am I legend. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a bad movie watcher. Um, but yeah, if I woke up, if, uh, that's what I would do. It's like I'd barricade myself somewhere so the animals can stay away and I'd have a nice garden and no weight room. And this is what I would do without anyone like being there to observe it. I'd probably shred myself down every few years just for my own entertainment to assess what I've done or haven't done. Um, so yeah, at the end, like this, this really should be your thing. And I'll tell you what, as I've gotten older, um, I've, I'm now really starting to realize how awesome this experience has been from a, from a health metric perspective. Like that wasn't my initial goal. I just wanted to extend my athletic career. Mm -hmm. I wanted to continue to be an athlete and, and, and live that sort of lifestyle. But like now it's like, man, I am, I forget. It's like, I'm jumping downstairs and I'm like, man, I'm 41. I like, get that's. Yes. That's weird. Like uh, you don't see people do that. Like I, I feel good when it comes to my energy levels. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm privileged in this regard because I took it up early. But I see people that I went to high school with, and I'm like, wow. It's like, like health isn't just something that you you get by default as you get older. So. Um, above anything else like it's again it's it's probably the number one thing you can do for yourself is is to just be health conscious especially in the in the modern world so um so yeah i think thinking of it that way that it's it's giving it a more holistic approach because i'm prone to it too like i i'm careful about what i expose myself to when it comes to social media because i'm prone to doing dumb things like anyone else because I spent too much time scrolling through my Instagram feed. We, we all are. So it's funny. Like someone might tell me like, Oh yeah, like ads don't work at, on me. And I worked at Google and I'm like, ads work on everyone. And that's why it's such a big company. You may not think it works, but like ads work, the images you see make an impact on you. Uh, it's hard to quantify, but it's there. It's a very flirtatious world. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and I think you mentioned one other tidbit that's interesting, and I understand not everyone can do it, but you seem so grateful for your journey and that it's what you enjoy to do. If it's something you enjoy to do in life, it's naturally not going to feel as stressful as if it's something that you're pushing against, right? Like there's aspects of what you're doing, like dieting, for a show that are stressful on the body. But if you appreciate and enjoy the process and you're having fun doing it, in general, you're going to be a less stressed out person than if you're on the other side of it. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I'm so grateful. Um, and, and, you know, like through bodybuilding is, is the lens that I view like the rest of the world. So it's even though, I mean, there's still some resistance there sometimes, but there's less than when it comes to other things in my life that I completely suck at. Like that's what I, like, whenever I meet someone who is a fan, which is still a weird concept of, something to say Mm -hmm. i'm like dude you don't know it's like i suck at so many things you just view the one thing that i'm like really good at and i agree my friends know that i have to call task rabbit to do the most simple thing around my house because i'm absolutely useless like it's comical how bad i am but i'm good at other things but i'm really bad at handiwork okay I'm, i'm terrible um but but yeah, so like the I, there's so much resistance when it comes to other things that I know I should be getting, I should be cleaning up my act with, right? And I always put myself like, that. how would, what sort of attitude would like would I have, would Alberto have if he had to train in 30 minutes, and you know the resistance was similar? It's like no, that dude would plow through it, right? So same thing with. Um, a lot of projects that I have going on, like writing is one that there's a lot of resistance. I think that's just the nature of that, that intellectual sport. Like I, that's what I've heard from every writer. Um, it's like, okay, well, Bert would find himself in the gym, like warming up, getting going and making it happen. So take that same attitude and let's, let's try to have some semblance of that when it comes to this thing that can be a little discouraging for you right now. So, um, so yeah, it's just, you pick one thing and it teaches you so many more things, n- not just that, that one thing, but it is important that it has to be your thing. Like with my new little one, everyone's like, oh, she's going to get into like bodybuilding and fitness. And I'm like, no, 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 she's going to pick her thing. And whatever that is, I'm going to do my best to facilitate that because, from that one thing, she will be able to learn everything and including like a basic level of fitness competency so that she could invest in in that part of her life. For sure. Awesome. So I want to move to coaching. Um, So you've been coach for quite some time. You mentioned that growing up, you went to like 11 different schools. You always had to be the new kid and kind of make friends easily. I'm curious, has that experience helped you as a coach? Yeah. Yeah. Tremendously, man. Um, tremendously. Um, it was 11 schools, but it was also, um, San Francisco is really weird because you have these pockets. I mean, there's less of them now, but they just weren't good pockets. Like I tell Eric Helms that like, you know, you were my first white friend because wow. like, yeah. And I was like 23, right? Like things are just, there's some pockets in San Francisco that you're like, I can't believe this is the place with like the golden gate bridge. It's, and Alcatraz. It's, still, it's still pretty sketch in a lot of areas I've been recently. Yeah. Yeah. It's taken a turn back in some respects. Um, so, you know, for me going to new schools and especially as you get older, you get into those teen years, like you just have to learn a, yeah, just how you got to learn to get along with people, uh, different sorts of people. And yeah, I became pretty good at this skill. So it's really translated over well into coaching and in that like we have very different life paths. So we started in different places, but here we are because, hey, this fitness thing, like, it's sneaky, man. It grabs a lot of people by the heart. So very few of the athletes I deal with, I'm like, hey, like we're like pretty similar from start to beginning. So you, you really have to like, get in there and and get to know your people and what makes them tick. And it's just those soft skills are so important when it comes to keeping your, your athletes in the game and a big part of what a coach does because a lot of the information is out there is just you stop people from getting in their own way. And the only way you do that is getting to know like, I don't know, like you're working with Rogers, like, okay, I'm trying to get Roger to like not pull these like Roger moves, <laughs> but you have to get your, know your people to, 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 to get there. So, um, so yeah, yeah, it's, 
the info's there, but like applying it to an individual is just a completely, completely different skill. So um, I'm, I used to hate that fact that it's like, man, I have to like remake friends every year, it seems. Uh, but like now it's like, that's cool. Cause I don't care. Like when it comes to personality types and who comes down, like my coaching funnel, it matters very little to me. And I know it's not that way for a lot of coaches. So forever thankful. Like that was part of my education in hindsight. Yeah. I think a lot of education in school is not what you actually learn in the books, right? It's just like going through life and growing up with people. And that's kind of like where most of the lessons were learned. At least that's how I think about it. Cause I don't remember what I learned like in high school. Oh yeah. Yeah. Same, same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. but but yeah yeah um the the soft skills when it comes to coaching uh is is something that is severely lacking out there and i think a lot of it has to do with the fact that you can start younger and it used to be a lot of the online coaches were personal trainers at some point and that'll teach you to build up some soft skills and in, in like dealing with and, and handling people and dealing with their like fluctuations because we all fluctuate. We're not we're not the same person every day. Um, so cool. if you're an online coach there and you're young, it's like, dude, it probably wouldn't hurt you to get some floor time uh, here and there. Leave the house in general, not even yeah. just as an online coach, but leave the house. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some images on the screen that I grabbed from your Instagram. Tell me either if there's a bigger story or if you learned something or something that maybe you learned from that person. Cool? Yeah. All right. So the first one is you and Jeff Nippard. Mm. Let's see. Um, Two things with Jeff. He, He took a very calculated gamble on himself because he was, he was going to be a dentist if I recall correctly. Wow. And he decided, you know what? I, that's a pretty safe career path. There's a lot of hard work that goes into that, but nevertheless, like the path is kind of pre-written for you. Right. And he, he decided to venture out and to, the fitness YouTube world and yeah, he identified a need and he's like, I could do this better than the way it's being done right now. And um, like, look at him now. So it, it, I, it's crazy to see where he had this old podcast. I think it was called ice cream and PRs or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it was very lo-fi and like now he's, he's Jeff Nippard. Um, like it's everywhere I go. Like, like, People are like, hey, you were you were in that one video with you know Jeff Nippard. Like, and it's it's all sorts of different types of people. So, um, so that's 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 the first thing that comes to mind is that he 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 didn't ignore, you know, like where like his brain, his passion wanted to to go. And I think that's that's why he's so successful because this is this is exactly what he wanted to do. Even though when he did that 180 a lot of people would have been like you're you're nuts i imagine that was that had to have taken some weird conversations with people who really care about him um and the other thing is he's just a fantastic bodybuilder uh people don't realize just how talented jeff is um like i i I, i'd say that a bodybuilder that he's, he's not competing any longer but like flex lewis like i think Jeff is kind of a, a natural version of, of uh, Flex Lewis. So, awesome. yeah. Cool. Next one is a OG picture of you and Eric Helms. I had just met Eric there. And yes, when I th- see that, I think of all the growth that he's undergone since. This was 2007, but his growth uh, really started after 2009. And I just remember there were certain things that Eric would do that I'm like, dude, you're so, such a lazy person when it comes to certain aspects. And he's been on fire ever since, and he hasn't stopped. And it's been just amazing uh, to be able to have a front row seat to, to seeing someone 
again, get get the most out of themselves, make things that were maybe weaknesses at some point a a, a, a strength. Um, and that picture there, we had literally just met. Like we were filling out our paperwork in person because we had been speaking on online on the bodybuilding.com forums, but we were getting ready to get up on that stage for our first show. So I'm so glad I have that picture. That's awesome. All right. So for the next two, it's more, what workout would you do with them? Uh, if you met them in person? Uh, so the first one is uh, Bobby Pandora, an old school bodybuilder from the early 1900s. Ooh. Um, honestly, uh, this is one of those where I'm in his dojo. I would be like, let's just see what you, I wouldn't do a day. I would do like a week with him. I want to eat like you, awesome. uh, or whatever it is that you would do. I want to get a nice sample size. And there would be so many things that I'm sure like, I think he used to like him and his brother used to carry each other upstairs for like lower body work. Wow. So, so yeah, we'd probably be carrying each other upstairs. Um, I would just want to experience that so that I can kind of goes to show you that it's like, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to keep showing up. And I think that would really cement that concept in, in my mind. So you'd go back in the past and work out with him as opposed to bringing him to the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, he can teach me more than I can teach him. I or think. you can grab him and you can take him to the year 3000. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you, <laughs> For the next one, I'm giving you options here. You have Detlef Shrimp, you have Machete, and you have the Incredible Hulk. Who do you train with and why? Uh, let's see. I will train with... I think... Uh, I'm going to go with the Hulk. I'm going to go with the Hulk. And, and this is this is... I think purely for social clout because if you, <laughs> you if you you could endure a workout with the hulk uh that's that's bragging rights so and yep. i let the hulk take over i guess it's, it's his day we're we're lifting whatever you want to lift and probably won't be able to keep up but yeah bragging rights that's hilarious So I know you tend to do a lot of uh, machines and different uh, cable work. So I'm curious for the upper body, what's your Mount Rushmore, your four favorite cable exercises? Okay. Ooh, so first one that comes to mind is some sort of, um, I guess, like diagonal pull down. Um, and there's like a gradient of like ranges that you, you can kind of work through there. Um, but I love that movement. It's just probably my only other like really big interest um, was physical, the physical side of anthropology. Uh, I've always been into like hominids and I, I think it's an extension of, you know, we're forever trying to get to know ourselves as, as people, like for me, it's like, it's extended into the species. It's like, okay, like how did, like, what's the story here? So when I look at that movement, like our AC joint is still very, like it, it's a primate AC joint and like it works really well in like these motions, right? Uh, it's it's like, man, we can throw, like we're, we're the one animal that like, man, we can launch some things. And it's kind of, when you think about it, it's a very similar, like we're just great in the zone. Um, so it just feels so or so orthopedically sound, so so natural. Um, so I, I, I love pulling from from that direction. Um, so that would be the first. I think the next one would be some sort of tricep movement. Um, simply because free weights at some point, like you don't see many people over the age of 30 doing skull crushers. Like that's a young man's game. You know, it's like a few people, like a nice little chunk, they get to that like one plate on the easy curl bar, and it's like not for long, brother. You know, like that's 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 how that goes. So again, kind of ergonomics. I, I can see myself doing cables for my triceps forever. Um a lateral raise as well. I think when I think of um I could only keep one muscle, 
it probably would be delts because it's not like it's not pecs. Like people are so, especially like younger men, they're so infatuated with like having that plate of armor. But it's like this does so much more for um, your your taper. Like I think of Usain Bolt, the sprinter, right? It's like yeah, he had a sprinter physique, great physique still, but it was his delts, that especially like you know he was a little bit tall for a sprinter per classic sprinter standards, but his delts or, or Dwight Howard. Uh, he was all yeah. delts. He's all delts. Even all Giannis delts. now is mostly delts and they look big. It's such an elegant looking muscle, right? Um, yeah. Going back to like the bipedalism, right? It's like, it just looks good on an animal that stands up to have like these like delts. So lateral raises across the body, behind the body. Like it's just, you can really lengthen those things. Um, and then probably abs, because that's prob- probably the only ab exercise that I can like really adhere to is, is just a standard like cable crunch. That's awesome. So uh, a couple of things came from there. You mentioned anthropology. Have you read Sapiens, the book? No, 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 no I haven't. Give it a go. I don't know if it's just anthropology. It kind of involves... Uh, economics and stuff too but it's like the history of the sapiens like homo sapiens and then there's some other ones there it's really interesting i listened to like the audiobook and skipped through some stuff but some interesting stuff there yeah it's crazy how we're just animals at the end you know yeah uh, and that's kind of the conflict that you know like same biology same species it's just such a different world that you know kind of like your dog right like you can't keep it inside all day at some point you have to let that thing out so you gotta learn to take care of this like ape body that like you've you've rented out for sure so i want to end things off today with kind of a fun question i know you're an avid fan of hiking so i'd love to know what do you love about it and is there a destination on your bucket list you want to do in the next 10 years Mm. um so it kind of goes like it, it's it, it goes back to like hey your dog needs to take a walk at some point I think all dog owners can understand that and I think hiking kind of works the same it's like a walk for people it's like you're taking your human out on the walk um like even even people who don't like it it's like okay you don't like it you know you're you you you're, you're that domesticated okay but do it a few times and then see if that translates over into anything when it comes to how effective you are at living in your little domesticated world. And when you get people to think that way, they're like, okay, yeah, I've been hiking for about two months now and I get dirty. I get sweaty. It takes up a lot, a big chunk of my day, but I generally feel better. So, yeah. so there, there's something to, yeah, taking your human on a walk. Um, Man, the number one hike that I have in mind, and and I only heard this once, so I haven't been able to confirm it because it's not very practical for me to execute this. I I, I spoke to to my my fiance about this, and and I, I told her, okay, so we're gonna do this marriage thing, but at some point, you gotta let me do the John Muir Trail on my own, and it's this trail that supposedly like there's certain alternative routes that you can take that you can go days without seeing a human being. And I guess to just be lost in my own mind and in nature for an extended period of time, uh, I just, I guess I fantasize about first human I see, I don't know, gas station somewhere. And, you know, I'm just still in that primitive state and like readjusting to my world and, but coming back with um, a lot of clarity when it comes to the many things that trouble me, like the many things that we all have that kind of trouble us and and they just exist in our own mind. So I like to do that hike. I don't know if it's particularly scenic, but if not that hike, I'd like to do some other hike where, um, yeah, I get to do that. I think I've also flirted with like Everest, but she said that one's out of the question because you know, like I hear go pretty bad. I hear Kilimanjaro is the one to do over Everest. But really? Yeah. yeah. I, have a, I have a friend who went, he said it was awesome. And then he gave me all these reasons and I was like, okay. 
It's like I, I just don't know if they're going to give me that one. But I, I, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> you but, take uh, what you can get. <laughs> yeah. So I'll take my John Muir or something similar. Cool. Alberto, thank you so much for your time today. Where can everyone find you? Uh, 3dmusclejourney.com. Um, not just my stuff, but uh, the other coaches as well. Um, everything, everything we do, you can find through there, whether it's our, our vault, which is a collection of, of courses. Our, the goal with that thing is to make it so that, hey, your first five years of bodybuilding, you could just do through through the vault. Like we have you, I cooked up from the start till then. Um, but yeah, it's got links to our social media and just about everything we do. So that's the spot. Awesome. Appreciate your time, man.